This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In the past few updates, Blackmagic have added a handful of surprisingly useful effects to the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. So I figured, why not combine some of the previously surprisingly useful effects with the new surprisingly useful effects to give you a surprisingly useful list of surprisingly useful effects. Now everything I'm going to show you is available in both the free and studio versions of DaVinci Resolve, so let's take a look. And the first one we're going to talk about is something that's surprisingly useful, it's been there for a while, but that easily missed, and that is the fusion generators. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve. Now I've got my effects library open at the bottom left. If you don't see the effects library, simply click on effects, top left hand corner to open those up. And what we need to do, expand the toolbox if it's not open already, then come down to generators, and then scroll right down and you've got these fusion generators, contours, noise gradient, paper, and textured background. Now I've made loads of videos talking about the paper one in the past. If you drop that straight on your timeline, you get a really nice textured paper background. I use this for putting images on, you can use it for a title screen. There's loads of really great uses for this paper generator. The contours one is another great one. If we pop that on there, we can lengthen this out. And then if we hit play, we get this nice little blue animated background kind of thing. If we open up the inspector, there's loads of controls. We can increase or decrease the number of layers. We can change the pattern start. We can change the type, the shape, the colors, all sorts. Now this one actually has versions enabled. So if we go to number two, there's a totally different version of contours. And again, we have all of the same controls. Number three, number four, number five, and number six. Now, if it has no animation, like this one currently doesn't really do anything, if you just scroll down within the inspector until you get to shape, and then there is a movement rate, if you just increase that, then you'll get some sort of animation within there as well. Simple. Noise gradient is another one with tons of controls and six different versions, and each of these do animate. So you can just hit play, and we've got this funky, fiery kind of background. And last but not least, we have the textured background. This does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a textured background. And once again, six different versions, all of which can be customized. You can change the colors, the shape, the gradient, the animation, the seed rate, all sorts of fun stuff. So make sure not to forget about the fusion generators. Fusion generators, surprisingly useful. Also within that same area is of course the solid color background, which is super useful for doing solid colors, as well as the four color gradient. So. Generators, make sure to have a look. There's some cool stuff you can do with those. But if you're trying to make some sort of other animated background just with a small amount of movement, especially useful if you've just got a JPEG of a colored background and you want to make it move just a little bit, Blackmagic recently added something called Noise Distortion, which allows you to do exactly that. So I've got this background colored sort of image here. It's simply a JPEG, it doesn't move, but I want to use it as a background and I want to give it a little bit of life, just a little bit of movement. So first of all, I'm just gonna pop it on my timeline. Let's just zoom it in so it actually fills the screen like so. Then within the effects library, we're gonna to go to the effects tab. And within here, I'm gonna click my little search icon, the little magnifying glass, and we're gonna search for noise distortion. And then we can just drop that directly onto my image like so. And then if we hit play, nothing much is gonna happen. But if we open up the inspector, we've got all of our controls within here. So we can change sort of the detail, the contrast, the scale. But once again, there's a seethe and a seethe rate. So if I increase the seethe rate, we then just get this small amount of motion. If we decrease that just a little bit, I only want this nice and slow, we just get a little bit of movement to that background. And again, we can come and change the brightness and the contrast. This will basically change how obvious the effect is. And if we scroll down, you can even change the displacement control so you can move it off center if you want to, even add some shading to it. So with not too much work at all, you can actually go from a solid background just to this nice moving background, which you could use for a title screen or a logo background or anything at all. Next up, we're gonna talk about the transform tool. Now I've talked about this in the past, it's been there for a while, but it's surprisingly useful and it's often overlooked. Now I'm not talking about the usual transform controls within the inspector. Instead, there's a dedicated transform effect within the effects library, and it does a handful of useful things. 
So this time we need to go to Open Effects and then we're just going to search for Transform and you'll find the Transform tool within there. And then I'm just going to drop it on this footage of me talking nonsense like so. Now for Give My Footage a click, open up the Inspector, Effects, we have the Transform controls. Now this does, as I say, a handful of really useful things. For starters, you can just change the position, the zoom, the rotation, the pitch, the yaw, the same as you usually would. If we scroll down to the image adjustment, you can add a crop. Now cropping via this tool is really useful because if we put this something like that, so we've just cropped this into a square, we can then change the position to put it where we want it. But then if we jump back over to the video tab, we can then also change the video position within that crop itself, which you can't do just using the cropping and the transform tools. So that just allows you to have that extra control over whatever you're doing. Now I'm just gonna reset that. On top of that, within the same area, image adjustments, there's also an edge rounding and an edge softness. So if you want to just display this video in a bit of a frame with our moving background like so, you can do really quickly and easily using the transform tool. You can also drag this rounding all the way up to get it in a nice circle, but there is now a better way of doing that, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, the last thing I want to show you about this transform tool, let me just reset those. If we change this control mode to interactive canvas, and then make sure underneath your preview window, click this little drop down and make sure you have your open effects overlay turned on, you get corner pinning. So you can just change this by clicking and dragging in the corners of the video to move this around. It's particularly useful if you're trying to pin your video to a billboard or you're just trying to make it look like it's positioned somewhere else, changing the perspective really quickly and really easily. Now don't forget, they also made a shape circle effect, which didn't quite work as well as it should have, in my opinion, so I went and improved it, made a better version, which you can download for free. I made an entire video about that, which I've linked down below. Now, talking of transform, if you're trying to transform your online business, you should probably check out Squarespace, who happens to be the sponsor of this very video. Whether you need a website to showcase your portfolio, sell physical or digital products in an online store, or arrange one-to-one -one consultations with the built-in scheduling tools, Squarespace has everything you need all in one place. There's loads of great templates to pick from, all of which can be fully customized. You can customize the colors, try new layouts with ease and bring all of your ideas to life. So if you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Simple. What else is surprisingly simple and surprisingly useful within DaVinci Resolve? Grids. There's an effect called grids and it just puts a big grid on things like this, but it can also be really useful for just lining up eye lines. If you turn it into a simple rule of thirds grid, you can use it for messing with compositions and just making sure things are all lined up. So let me show you how. So I've got a very simple two shot sort of interview here, and we just want to use a rough guide to make sure that our eye lines stay consistent. So all we're going to do, I'm gonna to go to the effects area and I'm gonna grab an adjustment clip and just put this on top of my footage like so. Then we're gonna go back to open effects and I'm just gonna search for grid and find the grid effect and drop that on my adjustment clip like so. And then within the inspector, I'm just gonna change my rows to three and my columns to three and we now have a real simple rule of thirds grid, which you can use just to make sure that our eye lines kind of line up. This looks pretty good, but if we wanted to, we could just sort of amend this a little bit, like so, so that it stays consistent. When it comes to actually rendering, you won't want this grid. The easiest thing, give the adjustment clip a click so it's highlighted, then hit D on your keyboard just to enable or disable that adjustment clip, like so. Easy peasy. Now another one they added very recently, a watermark tool, which allows you to just put watermarks over things like this. You can use titles or you can use a PNG, so you can use your logo. But you can also use this for a bit of a background generator if you wanted to. Let me show you how. So once again, I'm gonna start with an adjustment clip and we'll put this on top like so. Then within the effects area, I'm just gonna search for watermark 
There it is. We can drop that on our adjustment clip. And now we just have the words watermark appearing over our footage. In the inspector, we can change the text to be whatever we want. So we're gonna have this to be Mr. Alex Tech. You can see here it says clip name, drag logo here.png. So if you want to use a logo, you simply tick this box to use the logo. Then in your media pool, find your logo. So I've got a PNG here. We're simply gonna drag this over to the inspector, release. It'll change to be the PNG name. And now you can see I've got my little donut as a watermark. You can change the saturation, the size, the angle, and if we scroll down, you can change the copies, the width, the height, the spacing, all that sort of fun stuff. And there is also a blend mode, so you can bring this in or knock it down to change the opacity as well. Now, as mentioned, you can use this as a bit of a background if you want to, simply by swapping the order around. So I'm gonna drag this footage above the adjustment clip, and then let's just make it a little bit smaller. And now we have our little donuts in the background, we could come over and just change the opacity if we wanted to, and we could use that as a background for our title screens or whatever we wanted. If I wanted to get really fancy, I could grab my noise distortion, drop that on there, and now we have a kind of funky, janky looking donut background. And then if I went to the inspector, scroll down to my noise distortion, pop my seed rate up, we now have a funky moving donut background wall thing. Hey, who doesn't love a moving warbly donut wall? Now last but not least, this again was added very, very recently and it's called the paper edge effect. Particularly useful if you're trying to put a paper edge on things, unsurprisingly, like this, but it actually has a really useful secondary feature as well. And that is, it allows you to put a colored border around literally anything, even PNGs like this, photos, Whatever. This is particularly useful if you do your thumbnails within DaVinci Resolve. So let me show you how. So I've got my little donut PNG once again, and we're gonna go to the effects area, and we're just gonna search for paper edge. We'll grab paper edge, drop it on our PNG, and straight away we've got this paper edge effect. Now we can come in here and change all the colors of the paper and the contrast and all that sort of stuff. But if you simply knock this contrast all the way down, you get a relatively tidy, standard colored border around your PNG. And this works for literally anything. If I grab a video, let's just make this a little bit smaller within the frame, paper edge, straight away we get our paper edge background, knock the edge contrast down, and we've got a simple white border around the video. There was a standard colored border effect, but it quite often just put the whole border around the frame this paper edge works even better. And I also just wanna mention, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see you have shadow controls. This does have a drop shadow built in, so you can just mess with the color, change the softness, change the position, and off you go. And if you want to get really fancy and start cutting things out, this is just a freeze frame. So I'm going to scroll up to the top of the inspector. We've got the little magic wand icon give that a click, and that's gonna bring me straight into Fusion, and I can see I've got my paper edge down here, and then any sort of masking you do on your media in, the paper edge, this border, will now also still be applied. So if you wanted to get super fancy, let's grab the polygon tool, I'm just gonna bring this down, and then within here, I'm gonna do this super duper quick, so it's gonna look horrible, but let's just do something like, that and then I'll connect that to my media in and now we've cut me out very very roughly as you can tell but we now have our white border going around that as well cool eh editor Alex here I noticed this while editing this video if you change the position of your PNG with that border you'll notice that the border will move as well which is not ideal but if you use the transform effect, which I mentioned earlier, you can use the zoom and the position tools within that one instead, and that border won't change its position at all. So there you go, boom, bonus tip, use that transform tool instead. And there you go, a handful of surprisingly useful free effects on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know down below. Thanks for watching, take it easy, I'll see you next time.